everyone welcome to this anubhav learning series session in today's session we will talk about how to expose odata service out of a cds view using annotation model we will also talk about if there is a parameterized cds view how can i consume that parameter value from my odata service which is exposed out so let's go ahead and create a parameterized cds and quickly test that in add and then create an OData service and observe how the parameter value can be passed via the OData service to the CDS. And what happens if we ignore the mandatory parameter value to be passed to the CDS? Let's go ahead and explore that app quickly. So I'm going to go back to our app development tools in Eclipse. And here we're going to create a new CDS. So let me right click and say, hey, I would like to quickly create a new data definition. And now I would want to create this uh, for the purpose of my demo. So say Z online theory trainings.com demo CDS parameterized CDS. And I just say for business partner. So business partner parameterized CDS demo at online theory trainings.com this is our website where you can subscribe to the detailed course on CDS views with virtual data modeling in S4 all right so that's what you can do that okay since I missed out the naming convention uh, here the package name should be dollar dev right now I don't have a productive package and I just say finish awesome so let's go ahead and now uh, add our annotation so you see it's a parameterized CDS now uh, um, I'm sorry, I think I have created here a table function using CDS incorrect uh, template. Maybe I just have to quickly recreate. So create another one. And I say Z or T CDS arrow. CDS with more data. Let's click on next. And yes, of course, here you have to choose the templates. And I said, define view with parameters. Click on finish. That was the right template. And now I will just make sure that I give the DDQ name. So Z or T, CDS, D, Make sure that this name is less than 16 characters. And I'll add a parameter, say business partner uh, type. And I need a data type for this. So something we're going to get from our table so let's first mention the table we begin with the control and click just do a control and click it opens the database table in it itself and then you'll be able to find out the data type for all the all the parameters we have right so this is a quick navigation which is possible in ADT. what is ADT and all this stuff this is all covered in detail in my above on HANA training which you can subscribe from my website online theory trainings.com please go ahead and subscribe for this module if you are not comfortable with the basics of above on HANA development yeah very important so now let me just uh, do a control T and this opens the table and I have a field called business partner role which we will be using as a type uh, for input parameter and should be used for the filtering as well so now I put the data type over there and make sure that I add a bare condition now on the DT role equals to dollar parameter. And then I'll say, hey, my parameter is type. Super. Let me add here now the properties, insert all the elements here. And maybe just keep this uh, row key. Uh, keeping very few fields right now, not uh, really want to make it complicated for you. So just keeping it simple. And I'm just going to So these are all the properties I want to expose out of my CDS. And now it's uh, also we can just go ahead and add. Let's see. So let's quickly test this. Of course, you will get um, now a parameter uh, as an input parameter pop up. And you just execute a preview. And you see it's a mandatory one. It's not optional. So I have to pass the value. I want to only see customers, one. And now I see only the customers, which is PP role and zero one in the result of my CDS. Superb, CDS is ready. 
how to create OData? data very simple just go ahead and add add rate OData dot publish is equals to two that's it done save this up activate and now the OData service gets generated remember only the service definition and implementation gets created but service registration needs to be done which is a one-time activity if you just see there's a nice warning icon which says the service is not yet active so you of course have to copy this service name and go to control 6 open a SAP GUI window in above development tools in eclipse and now just go ahead with the transaction code uh, slash IWFND. So start with slash M slash IWFND slash main service. And there you have to maintain uh, the add service, just register the service. And I will just use as we add. Of course, right now I'm adding in a local object. You should do this in a productive package. And with that, your service is registered. Once you come back to CDS, you would uh, just uh, click on activate. Uh, I mean, not necessary, but just do that. And now double click to see the outline view here. In the outline view, when you go for the CDS, uh, the very first thing to observe here, guys, is this icon. Earlier, it was a warning icon turning into a black color icon, indicating the, CD, the CDS-based OData is now active. Uh, however, on the other side, you see here this coded exposure. Just right click here and say, um, you can say copy or you can say open. And now it will launch a browser session for us where it will ask me the credentials for my server. And on after entering, it will show me the service document. Wow, isn't it amazing? It's so fast and uh, quickly I can create an auditor service out of my CDS. Um, of course, there are multiple ways to create CDS-based uh, OData services, but this is the most effective and fastest way. What it has got now also uh, an entity set for parameters, you can see, uh, where you can uh, see the entity set for parameter. Of course, uh, there is a main entity set with which you will get here uh, for all the data to query the data. But now if I hit on the main entity set, it is going to give me an error because there is a mandatory parameter which uh, I have to pass while reading the data from this OData service. So let's quickly try that out. So I copy this uh, name of the entity and just try to hit at the at the end of the service. So you see, I just put my entity set name, yeah, and I just click on enter, and you would see that it gives me an error. Of course, very natural because I have to pass uh, the parameter, and you see, it says the entity. Uh, was not oops um, i think i'm wrong so i think we have to just go back and check the entity name this is the entity name i have to copy this and now try with this entity name enter and yes now i see the caller violated the precondition for the call of course which is very natural because my parameter value is not passed there is a mandatory parameter for that cds and i have violated because it's a mandatory parameter illegal parameter you see this error is coming so this is very natural in case if you guys are also trying to call some CDS view which has a mandatory parameter uh, by its nature it is bound to dump it is bound to give you this error so now let's see how to pass this parameter value so now how do we call it then so let's go one step back again and explore a little bit more now some of you must be wondering how come I am getting this beautified output this is also one more question which I've received from one of my YouTube viewer and well, when we run, we get you getting a beautiful formatted output, but I am not. So guys, I have added a free Chrome plugin here on my system. Because of that, I'm getting this uh, output formatted a little bit uh, more colorful and beautiful. So for that, you can also go back and just go in the Google and search for XML plugin for Chrome. Search for that and you see this XML viewer plugin the first entry itself uh, I would request you to just say add to Chrome just click on that and you would immediately after the next refresh start getting that benefit also out of the box so this is one quick uh, trick which you guys can also do to uh, your Chrome browser to add this plugin which will uh, beautify your response 
uh, into the XML form. Similarly, we have a JSON viewer plugin as well. Uh, you can also search for the JSON viewer plugin. Chrome, yeah. And you can also add this to beautify your JSON response, uh, which you're getting in the Chrome browser. And see how beautiful it will make the response naturally in the Chrome. All right, let's come back. So now I go one step back to the service document and observe what are all the entity sets we do have it here. So we have got two entity set. One is this one and second is this one. So we are more interested now uh, look at the metadata. So let's look at the metadata. Uh, and now when you look at the metadata, you see there are two entity types. The second entity type, however, has one parameter and the first one has, of course, two because that's uh, exactly to read the value based on precise key. But we are not interested in the precise key. We will always give the type, which is our parameter. And based on the type, it should get me all the records for from the customer uh, data set uh, for my CDS. So we will use this entity, uh, the second entity type, which is uh, having a corresponding entity set as the second one here. So I'll copy this one. This is the same as your entity name. So I'll just use that. Now, whatever parameter you have, guys, which you would want to pass, just use parenthesis. Your parameter name be underscore type, and what value are you looking? So I'm looking for value as zero one, maybe. Pass that up, and, and interestingly, please make sure this is very important when you're working with parameters. Always put slash set at the end. That's it. You must have to add slash set. That's very very important. Okay, and now press enter. And wow, beautiful. Voila, you got your response now out of the SAP system using that CDS based store data with the parameter value wherever it is zero one. You want to format this to the JSON format just for readability purpose, just add a question mark and say download format. That's basic O data stuff. You know, be all aware of it and just say this on and there you go. Nice, amazing, isn't it? And now this OData service can be consumed by SAP Web IDE quickly and quickly give a shape to a master detail or a work list kind of query application. Yeah. So how do you like this video? I think this, if this helped you, uh, do encourage me by giving a like and a subscribe on this channel. And do let me know your challenges with regard to CDS and in the comment box below in the, in the YouTube channel. And I would want you to uh, to guide me to create more videos like this and encourage me so that I would give you more videos on my YouTube channel of this kind of issues which you typically face on your on your day to day life while working with CDS and S4 HANA system. With that, I'm signing out. Thank you so much once again, and goodbye.